60 Minutes Rewind. When Chef Mario Batali stepped away from his business empire this past winter after nine women made accusations against him, it may have surprised his fans, but it did not come as a shock to many of the people who'd worked for him or served him at the Spotted Pig, a New York City restaurant he'd invested in and frequently visited. The Spotted Pig is owned by a friend of Batali's named Ken Friedman and its chef, April Bloomfield. Over the last six months, we've talked to dozens of people who work there or in Mario Batali's restaurants, and tonight some of them are speaking out. We want to warn you in sometimes graphic detail about what they experienced or witnessed in a work environment where they say putting up with incidents of sexual harassment and sexual assault were required if you wanted to keep your job. He would ask to wrestle with me. He would try to grab me. He's a monster. Really, a monster? I think Mario Batali is a monster. He has been lauded he, as this incredible chef and this leader, but behind the scenes, he is hurtful and he does not respect women. And you're saying this based on your personal experience? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Trish Nelson was a waitress at the Spotted Pig who frequently served Mario Batali. Hey, welcome back. Batali is one of the biggest stars in cooking. That's not enough for us. He owns 26 restaurants and has appeared on television for years as a gregarious and friendly master Italian chef. We called him the Red Menace. Why? Because it was a warning. The Red Menace is here. Like, pull all of your bits in. Mario's in town. He came to party and have a good time and make passes at the female wait staff, make inappropriate comments, grab people. That happened more than once? It yeah. happened a lot. Yeah. That was common? Yeah. Natalie Sable was a waitress and Jamie Seat a manager at the Spotted Pig. He grabbed, he grabbed my breasts. Were you serving him? Yeah. And he kind of reached around and... Seed says she complained about Batali to one of the restaurant's co-owners, Ken Friedman. I said, Ken, Mario just grabbed my boobs. And he's like, oh, don't worry about it. It's just Mario. And I was like, okay. Mario Batali was an investor in the Spotted Pig and a close friend of Friedman's. What I do for a living is basically I throw parties every night. When Friedman opened the New York restaurant 14 years ago, he wanted a place that catered to celebrities. Batali and other A-list stars would frequently hang out in a private party room on the third floor. What was the allure of the third floor at the Spotted Pig for celebrities? You could smoke cigarettes, you could smoke pot, you could do drugs, you could have sex if you wanted to. I mean, there were no boundaries. Dozens of employees told us that lack of boundaries meant a workplace where Ken Friedman and Mario Batali did whatever they wanted, and there was no one to complain to. Many told us that emotional abuse and intimidation were common. Did you ever see Ken in a rage? On a daily basis. What kind of things would he say? He would berate you, uh, belittle you, make you feel like you were nothing. Aaron Fine, who bartended at the Spotted Pig for two years, says Friedman's abuse wasn't just verbal. She says he sexually assaulted her in his car outside the restaurant in September of 2014. This is the first time she's spoken publicly about it. He lunged forward, he grabbed my face, he started kissing me very sort of sloppily. Um, he pulled up my shirt, he put his hands on me, and I felt frozen. Fine says she managed to get out of the car, and Friedman told her not to tell anyone what happened. It was terrible, and not what I wanted. But, um, you know, he didn't ask. Hours later, Friedman sent Fine these three emails asking her for sexy pictures. Send sexy pics tonight, I'll delete. And I was just really shocked by that. I worried about what would happen if I didn't respond. You worried if you didn't respond, what, that he might retaliate? It was not a good option for me to not have this job. So I thought the best move would be, you know, don't respond and just let's pretend like this never happened. A spokesman for Ken Friedman says he vehemently denies any non-consensual activity and says Aaron Fine never issued a complaint and continued to want to work for him. But Fine wasn't the only employee who received requests for sexy pictures from the boss. 
These text messages were sent to Carla Rizabet the same night, she says, Friedman tried to kiss her in 2010. Rizabet was an executive in charge of selecting wines for all Friedman's restaurants, but she says he was often demeaning to her. Ken came up and I was leaning down to put something away and he, I had a low cut dress on and he said, oh, I understand why you need to wear push up bras. I see the stretch marks on your breasts. And I stood up. <laughs> it's amazing, there's this much emotion connected to it still. I stood up and I was furious. I was like, Carla, don't punch your boss. Don't punch your boss. Keep your job, because you love this job. Why do you think he said that to you? It is a pure use of power to manipulate somebody into not feeling like they have any power. It was that feeling of powerlessness, they say, that kept nearly all these women from speaking out until recently. Ken Friedman and chef April Bloomfield own seven restaurants together and have employed hundreds of people over the past 14 years. But they didn't have a full-time human resources department until 2017. So there was no chain of command to go to? Mm -mm. Nope. And I didn't go to April because I don't trust her about it either. Did you feel as a, as a female co-owner of the company that April Bloomfield had your back? No. I know other people went to April and she did nothing to make them uh, feel safe. Other staff say Bloomfield may not have known the extent of the harassment. She declined our request for an interview, but in a statement says, I'm in the final stages of severing my partnership with Ken Friedman. I deeply regret not doing more to protect my staff who relied on me. Many of the women we spoke with say they feared being fired if they complained to Ken Friedman and say he would sometimes blackball former employees. Manager Jamie Seat says Friedman was so angry when she was leaving his company that he contacted the new restaurant where she'd just been hired. The director of operations of that restaurant called me and he said, I'm so sorry, we're rescinding your job offer. And I said, does this have anything to do with Ken Friedman? And he was like, yes. Trish Nelson finally quit in October of 2012, the day after, she says, Ken Friedman sexually assaulted her in his car. We got into the car and he lunged to kiss me. He's a 6'4 man and so you're pretty overpowered and I just felt panic. I felt panic because I never thought that was going to happen to me. I thought that I was respected. Ken Friedman and Mario Batali also declined our request for interviews. In a statement, Friedman says in part, over the past several months, I have focused on my own personal decisions and my mistakes for which I have apologized. Mario Batali says in a statement, my past behavior has been deeply inappropriate and I'm sincerely remorseful for my actions. In December, he was removed from his television show and is leaving the company he founded. The story will continue after this. I've thought about it a lot. But earlier this year, another woman came forward to us with an incident she says occurred all the way back in 2005. She asked us to conceal her identity because she says she was concerned about future job prospects. Who wants to be defined by the worst day of their life? She was working in Vitaly's restaurant, Bobo, when she says he invited her to the Spotted Pig for a party. She says she remembers sitting with Batali alone at a small table on the second floor, drinking white wine. It gets completely foggy for me. And this is part of the messy, scary part for me. There is a part where it, it all disappears. I remember a moment where I was on his lap, kissing him, like he was kissing me. And then I remember throwing up uh, in a toilet. And that is all. She says she woke up around dawn in a room on the third floor of the building. I woke up by myself on the floor, I don't know where I am, of an empty room, wooden floor, I see broken bottles. The first thing I think is I've been drugged. That was the first thing I thought is I've been, I've been assaulted. My right leg was very deeply wounded, like scratched, like deep scratches. Uh, I didn't think I had been raped. I didn't feel any kind of trauma. I didn't, you didn't internally didn't feel... I didn't feel any trauma internally. Mm -hmm. But I also did find... I looked on my skirt. 
there were two areas it looked like DNA. Semen. Semen. She says she had to go into work, and hours later was back at Batali's restaurant, Babo, when he called in. I said, what happened? You asked him that? Yeah, I asked him, what happened last night? And he just was silent, wouldn't talk to me. After her shift, she says she called a crisis hotline and went to a hospital for an examination. Four people confirmed to us that she told them what happened at the time, one of whom accompanied her to the hospital. She says she also went to speak with a detective at the New York Police Department's Special Victims Division. They tried getting me to file a report. They tried, they tried. But I, you know, young actress, no resources, no money. I couldn't, I, I couldn't do it. Because she declined to file a police report, the rape kit taken at the hospital was never processed, and hospital records have been expunged. She still has few answers as to how she ended up blacked out and alone on the third floor of the spotted pig. You believe he broke the law with you? Yes, and that's why I called the crisis hotline, because I knew something very wrong happened to me. Mario Batali issued a statement that says, I vehemently deny the allegation that I sexually assaulted this woman. But three years later, there was another incident in that third floor party room. Manager Jamie Seat told us what she saw, and three other employees who were also there confirmed her account. We were in the third floor of the restaurant, and there are cameras, and there had been a party, and it dwindled down to two people, Mario and then this woman. Seat says she was counting the evening's receipts in the office and watched on a video monitor as Mario Batali began to reach his hand up between the legs of the woman. She looked like this. So that, to me, looks like someone is unconscious. And he actually, you saw him pull up his chair and start mm -hmm. to touch her mm -hmm. sexually. Yes. Mm -hmm. When you saw that on the monitor, what did you think? You know, uh, there, he crossed a line, a huge, a huge line mm -hmm. as of to doing, assaulting someone that's unconscious. Um, so we all went out there and we stopped what was going on. Hey, Mario, how are you doing? Let's get you a cab. Just, you know, we were saying something just to snap him out of this. Seat and others say a number of employees later watched the video of what happened and say Ken Friedman was told about it as well. You have no doubt you saw Mario Batali. No doubt. Sexually Absolutely. assaulting an unconscious or semi-conscious woman. Yeah, no doubt at all. And, uh, you know, to this day, I'm... I feel ashamed that I never called the police. We spoke to the attorney for the woman who at the time was an up-and-coming chef. She declined our request for an interview. The problem with the rest... Trish Nelson and all the women we spoke to say they are speaking out about the spotted pig because what happened to them is all too common, they say, in the restaurant industry. Doing this over 20 years, there isn't one place that I haven't had this kind of an experience. There's not one restaurant you've worked in that you haven't had some sort of harassment. Exactly. It's pervasive throughout the entire industry. You would like what happened to you and others to have an impact around the country. Yes. I, I would love for f women to be able to feel like they finally have a voice. They can say no and not lose their jobs.